not too much room yet. <laughs> There we go. My hair look okay? Bicycles are taking over the world. I'm not kidding. The Worldometer reports that 115 million bikes have been made so far this year. That's twice the number of cars and almost as many TEDx talks. Uh, bikes are out selling uh, cars all over Europe. And I know you're thinking Europeans are always going around grabbing a bottle of wine, their mistress, <laughs> biking to Ikea. <laughs> but it's the first time it's happened in Italy since World War II. And it's the first time it's ever happened in Spain. Well, Dios mío the Spanish people, and that was a really bad <laughs> Spanish. Well, guess what? It's also happening here in the United States. Last year, four million more bikes were sold than new cars. <laughs> and guess what? We're driving less. For 60 years, we saw the per capita number of bikes, uh, uh, not bicycles, per capita number of cars, miles that we were driving going up. The last eight years, it's been dropping, thanks in large part to millennials. A quarter of them don't even have a driver's license. It's because they're all waiting in line for the latest product from Apple. <laughs> the reason the millennials have the money is we spend up to $8,000 a year to own a car. Only 16% of that stays in your local economy. And when we talk about fatalities, the number of fatalities last year from cars is equivalent to the entire student body population at the University of Georgia. And if you look at worldwide numbers, it's as if seven jumbo jets were dropping from the sky every day. You take a look at pollution, traffic, the total lack of Doris Day parking, Doris Day, you ever see the old movies where she's able to drive up in front of a building? in Manhattan, and there's always a free parking space right in front of it? Well, guess what? Bicycling, that's pretty much what happens. In front, free, on a stage. So everybody ready to give up their car? <laughs> yeah, everybody's like this. Um, I realize most people have a hard time wrapping themselves around the idea, but then most people have a hard time parallel parking, especially when I'm in the bike lane waiting on them. Um, the, the good news is there's never been a better time to give up your car. We have apps now that will give you real-time information on a bus. It'll let you know where the flattest route is for a bike route, where the cutest baristas are. Um, there's also uh, sharing programs. We have bike sharing, uh, car sharing. You may have heard of Zipcar. I'm a member of Zipcar. And nine years ago, that was a big catalyst for me to get rid of my car. Well, that and my third DUI. <laughs> now, the reality is Zipcar checks your driving record, maybe not as thoroughly as they should. But uh, uh, another thing about Zipcar, I actually rent out my parking space in my building since I don't have a car anymore, which pays for my Zipcar, or these like really cool commuter clothes. <laughs> it's a new little local shop called The Spindle. <laughs> um, one of the things that, uh, that's great about bicycling is you don't have to go to the gym. You can get this banging body just by riding around. Uh, I can still wear clothes I have from college. I'm just waiting for the big comeback of plastic disco shorts. They're purple. I really have a pair. <laughs> and one of the things I don't get about the gym is being crammed in a tiny room, spinning with 50 other cyclists, and you don't go anywhere. And how do you think they got to the gym? People call me crazy. 
There's a study out there that if you spend three hours a week bicycling, that you'll actually reduce your risk of stroke and heart attack by 50%. You also increase your sexual attractiveness by 300%. Yeah, that's not a study. I'm just looking for a date. And you would think it'd be kind of a challenge if when I show up with my bike and my date's like, uh, how are we going to get around on that? Bungee cords. <laughs> Another concern people have with bicycling is sweating. And I'm, I'm all about hardcore antiperspirants. I've been looking around trying to find the best one. And uh, uh, do you know the active ingredient? is aluminum. So I've been riding around with a couple cans of Diet Coke under my arms. Now I did a, uh, uh, I went to a fundraiser meeting and I rode up like this, this really long gradual hill and I get there and my dress shirt is just completely pitted out. So I'm, I'm like, oh my god, I can't go into this meeting looking like that. So I happen to have some dry gym clothes in my backpack. So I went in asking for $30,000 wearing a tank top. I'm serious. And uh, of course, the question is, did I get the money? Of course I got the money. I think they were really impressed with my commitment to the environment or my big guns. I don't have big guns. I have slingshots. <laughs> I'm, I'm like a lot of other cyclists where our upper bodies are, are so small that we can shop at the baby gap. The only problem is the shirts only go about to here. But the bibs fit. I know one of your biggest fears about bicycling is spandex. The good news is um, you really don't need it unless you're doing uh, distances, that you're doing racing or go-go dancing. Um, as far as, uh, uh, well, I, I, I had, uh, uh, got invited to a friend of mine uh, for Thanksgiving, and we ended up, uh, I, I rode my bike down there, 50 miles. The plan was for her to bring a change of clothes for me to have while I was there. And she ended up being an hour late. I'm hanging around in spandex and a jersey that fits skin tight with these pockets in the back that's like a uh, mutant kangaroo. So I'm, I'm hanging around with her family, and the kids are like looking at me like, who's this geriatric go-go boy? Anyway, probably the biggest change that we've seen with bicycling is the changing mindset of motorists. And a decade ago, the muscles in my body that got the biggest workout were in my middle finger. It's very rare now that motorists are yelling or honking at me to the point that I'm actually getting my hearing back. Um, the other day, I was going along and a motorist waved me through, even though he totally had the right of way. And I was so appreciative, I rode up to him and gave him a big kiss. He's charging me with sexual battery. I didn't use any tongue. All I want to say is bicycling is awesome. It's something that we loved as a kid. We need to embrace that again. When I go down a hill, I'm 52 years old, and I still go, wee! Serious. And then when I come across another bicyclist, we nod to each other because we know bicycles are taking over the world.